Hello YouTube, it's Becky of Becky's House of Sewing. I am here on my first video, so please bear with me as I'm sure this is of the highest quality and I will never do anything better than this video. Uh, this channel will be all things thread and needle. Um, I do cross stitch and quilting and really anything else that is with a thread and needle. Um, I like, I like projects. I like fun things. I like to make things. Um, I am not prolific at it. I am much better at talking about it, oogling things and buying things, um, than I am making things or finishing things. But I do have a finish to share with you that I'm very excited about. Um, but first I'd like to explain, I am in my sewing room which I am glad you can only see this much of it because it is quite messy. Um, you also might hear my wonderful, sweet, loving dog, Buster Brown, the one-eyed monster. He will likely make his appearance on this channel because I love him dearly. But after 8 o'clock at night, and we're about 11 o'clock at night right now, Buster wants two things, either to be fed or to be in bed, fed or bed, anything else, unacceptable, and he shall bark. And unfortunately, Buster does not like my sewing room, which I find very distressing because I would love nothing more for him just to kind of cuddle up in the multiple beds that we have in here for him. And I uh, just enjoy a cute little rest so that I can, you know, lean over my sewing machine and look at him and say, oh, isn't he adorable? All right, I digress. I'd love to tell you a little bit about how I got the name Becky's House of Sewing. Um, and it was really a genesis of my husband's brilliant, um, and I say that because he is brilliant and he is my husband. Um, but he had posted on Facebook several months ago a link to purchase a flying saucer house so yes, a house in the shape of a flying saucer. And it was like on legs, so it kind of looked like a bug. And my immediate heartfelt response was, you clearly want to live alone. And then um, he made a couple other comments and I said, it's fine, honey, you can buy the house, you can move into the house. I will then begin to create the entire house as my own sewing room which is honestly my ultimate dream. You know, have a long arm machine, have a sewing uh, a machine sewing room, have a, have a cross stitch handwork room, have, a, have an area where my friends can gather, everything with excellent lighting, um, obviously, and really good magnification, again, obviously. Um, so uh, we banter back and forth and my cousin from Texas, uh, chimed in saying that this was the most hilarious uh, chat and response that he's seen in a while and which I, I mean he's blood kin so he clearly recognizes hilariousness when he sees it um, and so m my husband got defensive immediately and uh, said come on man you you know it wouldn't be BOYB at the spaceship you can come and I'd be happy to. At Becky's House of Sewing, you, you'll probably have to bring your needles and thread and police, police. What self-respecting crafter would not have spare needles and fabric? <laughs> Who does he think I am? So I said, oh, contraire. At Becky's House of Needle, uh, um, House of Sewing, you would never need to BYON. She would have plenty to share. And I am now falling in love with my new clubhouse name. So Becky's House of Sewing became a thing, which I love and I think is very funny. I'm ready to make, um, you know, a clubhouse sign and all that stuff. And I have a cricket. I could do that. I just haven't done it yet. I've, I've started thinking about what my logo might be, that kind of thing. Um, so... I shared this on our Wednesday stitching group that I um, have revitalized with my mom and her friends. 
and my friends too, and my family. Um, and uh, they also wanted to chime in because I would say 90% of them are over 70. Some are over 80 or thereabouts. Uh, I wouldn't call them old because I would, you know, be in trouble. But elder care has come up a time or two and how that I might be in charge and that Becky's House of Sewing might have a, an offshoot, a, a neighbor a facility, you know, for the slightly befuddled. <laughs> so um, they did request that all the nurses be male and shirtless. I think that's a fair request and a place that I would like to retire to, you know, retirement dreams. <laughs> so anyway, that is where Becky's House of Sewing came in. I am in, currently in Becky's room of sewing. I haven't been able to graduate yet to House of Sewing, but dreams, dream big people. Um, so you might see uh, my Tumblr quilt on the back that my mother has um, kindly used her die cutter. Um, and now I can't remember the name of it because I'm recording. Um, and we made a bukoodle of, of, um, tumbler blocks or tumbler pieces for me. And I've just been putting them together. I have no rhyme or reason. I've discovered that tumbler blocks are not as easy as one may think. You, they're directional. You have to, you have to be thoughtful on what, how you're sewing each block, which you would, I, that makes sense even as I'm saying it, but alas, there we are. So the reason why I started today is um, one of my uh, friends who is a young stitcher told me that I should start a YouTube channel. And my mother has also told me to start a YouTube channel, which you will see a theme in my life that my mother is always right. It's slightly annoying, kind of frustrating at times. I, I know she's right. I admit she's right. But how is she always right? I just, I don't understand. I have learned to go with it and learn to when she says things just to do them. It, it Make your life easy. Why, why try to fight that? She has a track record. It's proven track record. 47 years of track record of being right. I'm sure some people out there feel what I'm feeling. All right. So today, Wednesday, October 6th, on stitching, during stitching, I received from Total Framing my first framed piece from Total Framing. It is my pandemic piece. They've had it for a very long time. Um, it's beautiful. And I can't wait to show you and tell you about it. So hold please. Oh, sweet buster. Just barking away out there. Here it is. Here it is. Sorry, there's a little glare. It has museum glass, but there's, I'm very close to the light that I'm using. I mean, gorgeous, right? gorge us. So that is uh, Mariah Blackburn's design and it's uh, the same, uh, the name of it is the same verse. Uh, there's a season for everything. Um, I, I, I bought this in a store in Memphis when I was helping uh, open the container store at, in the Memphis area. Yes, I work at the container store. Best job of my life. Anyway, um, so uh, the cross stitch store there, now I'm not going to remember the name, but I will try to remember to put the link in the description box. Again, how do you forget everything when you're on video? I could have probably told you when I'm not on video. Anyway, I love them. Great service. I've ordered things since then, um, and they ship things to me. It's wonderful. Um, but I've always cross stitched. Um, it's just been a thing. I haven't like done it prolifically or consistently, um, but I do like big projects. Um, I do like nostalgia. 
Um, I like the idea of, of samplers just because they're fun and old and have lots of cute little motifs. So I was kind of looking for that kind of thing. I had uh, completed my wedding sampler um, by conveniently the same uh, designer, which I didn't know at the time that I was looking at it, that it was her work, but it makes sense. Um, but I, I, I'm telling you this because I, I don't know what fabric it is. I, I, it was at a time in my life that I didn't realize that knowing the exact linen color and, and count was important. I, I've been watching floss tube for several months now. Um, and, and I'm up to speed. Totally no. I can, I can keep that information up to date. I can tell you it's modeled. I can tell you it's 32 count. Outside of that, I have no idea. What is also interesting about this piece is that I had the tragic experience, and, and maybe some of you have noticed. Let me pull it back up here so you guys can kind of see this upper uh, corner here uh, by the 2021. Um, and you can see on the other side too, here. Yeah, that's two pieces sewn together because I started too high on my fabric and I didn't notice till I was two thirds of the way done. Let's take a moment to think about that for a minute. What, what pain, what anxiety, what, what tragicness one may have having completed the bottom two thirds of that piece only to discover you're two inches too short. Were there moments that I was like, well, I, I can't finish this. I have to throw it away. Yes, there were. Were there moments of, you know what? This is exactly, exactly what would happen in 2020. Yes, yes, they were. So I took a moment, I set it down. I walked away and then I called my mother. <laughs> Mom, what do I do? And she said, Becky, it's, it's just gonna be your Quaker piece where you piece it together, where, where you, a little wabi-sabi a little little Japanese philosophy of mending it with gold. I mean, you have to do what you have to do. It, it's not going to be perfect, but what in life is. And there is a season for everything. And I, I just, I, again, the moment I embraced that and I went directly to um, the cross-stitch store near me in Rock Hill, um, Rock Hill, South Carolina, um, and, uh, and, and found, uh, the same fabric ish. I know it's not going to ever exactly match, but I'm pretty sure it's the same dye lot. It is definitely the same count, but you know, after you're stitching for something for so long, it's, you know, all the, yeah, it's different and it doesn't exactly match, but it's very close and I love it. Love it dearly. Total frame. Um, framing was a delight. Brenda and Laura are always right. Very similar to my mother. A little less annoying because I'm not related to them. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it was wonderful to work with them. Uh, reasonably priced, I thought. Um, but certainly something uh, that was a treat and a little extra because this to me was an heirloom piece because I wanted something um, to represent that time of my life, the pandemic, and then we are all surviving it. It was hard, stressful, still is hard and stressful. Um, but I uh, am not as scared as I once was, which is nice. Um, so with that uh, finished piece, which, you know, I might have another finished piece soon. I wanted to share with you what I was working on now. Um, I do have projects. I have wits. Um, but I don't, I don't have a lot of time. Um, I, I have a long commute to work. So I listen to a lot of podcasts, um, and a lot of books on tape. And when I get home, I'm kind of exhausted and don't have a ton of time to do that. And, um, you know, life is busy. So I, I tend to work on one project at a time. So when I 
do these videos. I don't know how often I'm going to do them. I don't know how much of my own stitchy progress I'll have to share, but we'll see. Um, I am working on, where's my paper? Now I'm totally respecting what everybody does on YouTube. Ah, here we go. Bring these over here. I am working on uh, a YouTuber that has uh, enlightened me uh, quite a bit, Jean Farish. She has a stitch along um, that is... Uh, the actual stitch along has kind of ended, but there's um, many people who have not completed it yet, and I'm one of those. Um, and it's named Roxy. Uh, she has a reproduction sampler called Roxana. I'm sure there's a last name in there. Don't know it. Um, that has a verse that I love in it. Um, and it's a sampler. So it's got everything you love. Great border, great verse, alphabet all that kind of stuff. Um, and as she was doing her YouTubes, uh, Jean Farish, highly recommend. Um, she was contemplating what Roxana would do, what colors would she use in this day and age. And so that inspired her to update the sampler, um, and do a, a mystery sampler, so to speak. So she recharted it, um, um, in the spirit of the, of the original sampler, but it's a little different. So like the borders match cause little girls don't count well, big girls don't either. Um, but well, I digress again. Um, so these are very fun colors. Roxy has been a, a very fun, uh, stitch for me. Let's see if I can get close. This is just a picture of the completed work because mine, I use roller frames, um, because they're easier for me and my posture and yeah that sort of thing so uh, let's see if I can unscroll this a little bit and see if I can show you at least half and half because it's really pretty and it's another big one it's like 11 by 17 kind of deal and I'm almost done with it uh, which is good I'm not terribly far and I think uh, I'll be able to get it done in 2021. So that's that's the good thing. So here is the top part of the sampler. Let's see if I can move back here. Get used to all that. And then uh, the bottom of the sampler. There. And you get to see my name. Yay. Look me up. I'm on Facebook. Pecky Belly at Instagram. Um, so I'm almost done with the border. I've got all the center done. I'm very excited. And I'm mostly excited. Oops, just not to wing that off. I'm mostly excited because I really want to start my next project. And of course, like I have, let's be honest, I, I have projects waiting that I'm excited about. I have whips that are waiting that I've enjoyed. But, you know, the shiny object wins the day. Um, hello from Liz Matthews. Hi, Liz Matthews. Um, I, I have uh, enjoyed her floss tubes, and I really enjoy m much of what she does. Um, for some reason, it speaks to me. I like her mother's stuff as well. But I bought this guy because I couldn't resist. And I got it kitted up, and it's on its way to me. Thanks to the Stitch and Frame Shop of Rock Hill, North South Carolina. Once again, saves the day. I'm not doing it in the silks. Um, I haven't worked with silks before. I am looking for the right project to try a silk project out on. My mother told me I should get some Mary Clayton silks, so I'm sure that's on my list one day. Because she's always right. Um, running theme. Um, but I did the DMCs with the exception of, um, I, I had them at the Stitch and Frame Shop just uh, pick out some over-dyed Weeks dye works for me uh, that they thought would be comparable to uh, the silks. Um, I also have never worked with over-dyed threads, really, so I'm excited to do that too. Um, so I've got that all kitted up, and I am chomping at the bit to finish it or get started on it. And I am making sure that I finish Roxy before I do that. So that's kind of all I have to do now. 
conveniently, Buster Brown has decided to come in. He gave up. He said, fine, I'll get in the bed where, where you want me to be. And I'll be cute while I do it. So let me see if I can get a picture of my sweet dog. And you're just going to have to uh, ignore the mess. Because it's a mess. Let's see if I can flip my camera. Oh, I can't. I don't know how. So I guess we're just going to have to deal with missing the sweet puppy. So I will show you Buster Brown another day. And I'm sure Pearl the cat will make her appearance as well. Um, because I am a self-respecting crafter. I have animals that keep me company. I look forward to doing these again. I, again, I, this is my very first one. My first floss tube. I'm a floss tuber now. Um, so I don't know how often I'll do them or any of that. But I look forward to seeing you guys again. Um... I'm most nervous about keeping up with comments. I, I, that, that scares me. I just don't know if I'll be able to do that part, but I'm sure I will love getting to know everyone and, um, you know, just, you know, being part of the stitchy community of any sort is always a uplifting, uh, entertaining, inspirational thing that, um, I, I really uh, enjoy being part of. So I'm sure I will uh, love to get to know you guys and um, be able to respond. But if I don't <laughs> get to respond to you guys right away, um, just I ask you to be patient with me. Talk to you soon. Bye.